this is these two items were the same pieces of equipment that we had in 1961 for the Nava station, the Flarcat. This is the transmitter. It's a Heath kit, AT1, the first transmitter they ever produced, starting in 1953. This is some from around that year, 53, 54, 55. This receiver is a Helicrafters SX99, first introduced in 1955. Zillions of them were made. I'm hoping that this works well enough so we can actually work somebody on That's the idea here, to try to get this thing to radiate a signal. The receiver, very different from today's receivers, with transceivers, really you have one dial, you have tunes, and it's you transmit and receive on the same frequency. Well, no, we didn't do that in those days, but novices anyway. Novices were restricted to crystal control and 75 watts input power. So 75 watts input, you can guesstimate between 50 and 60% efficiency. That's how much power output novices were actually putting. 35, 40 watts, something like that. You know, if you were really lucky, you can get it up to maybe 50 watts out. But most transmitters. Are. This transmitter runs 24 watts input, and I measure the output. It's 15 watts when it's properly tuned and adjusted, and it is 15 watts output. There are two tubes in here to develop the RF. There's an oscillator, which is a 6AG7. It's a beam power tube, specially designed for crystal oscillator circuits in the late 1940s. The final tube, the power amplifier, is a 6L6, which is, well, this is another 6L6. This is a tube version. They also had a metal version. I think this is a metal version I use in there, which, with proper voltage and current, you could get about 15 watts out of, and that's what it's, that's what it's showing here. The transmitter, in order to be operated, had to be adjusted. There's a pr proper procedure that we would follow in those days start out with the grid adjustment, you would tune the grid for a little reading, then you switch to the plate and you throw the switch into the plate position so you could read that and you adjust for maximum output. Or in those days we would tune for a dip, in other words minimum reading on the plate meter. Grid maximum, grid or driver was maximum, it was only going to be maybe like three or four milliamps, or maybe five milliamps at the most. And the plate side, you tune for the dip or minimum. You keep going back and forth until the plate current slowly increases up to where it, it's supposed to be. For these transmitters, depending upon how much power the transmitter was running, I had a Globe Scout, which is made by WRL, and uh, that one would have you tune up to 125 milliamps. But on this one, I think it's, um, uh, I think it's around, is it 100? No, I, I, I forget what, what it is in the manual, what it tells me. But that's not important, because nowadays we don't even think of tuning that way. You can tune either for dip to get maximum output, or you can just simply tune, as I do nowadays, rough maximum output on a meter. Maximum output will be equivalent to your minimum loss, just like on a, on a, uh, an here's an advertisement, AT1. thank you, this is 1955, so this already, it's been out for a few years, Heathkey 81 kit, 2950, this is 1950, oh, by the way, they say 35 watts, $5, $5. Always advertise. I don't think they ever have, uh, could you hold no. the up 24 watts, could you hold it on, what, could you hold the app, yeah, if you can see it, right to the right, oh, hold on, from 10 meters or six. That's something else you guys don't know, the new guys. Something called TVI, television interference. So they used to call them Tennessee Valley Indians on the phone. They didn't want to use that expression. If you were operating phone, especially on a band like 10 meters, which would multiply to twice, get almost up to the channel 2 frequency. Channel 2 started at 56, I think, then, right? 56 to... 60 or so? Six meters was the real devil. Six meters was, of course, where you're even closer. And, um, but 10 meters or six meters, either by doubling or just by overload from the six meter transmitters. 
Oh boy, just putting up an antenna in those days, you'd be a target. Your phone would start ringing before you even put a ring in the room. Yeah. You know, they say, oh, stop messing with channel two. I, I was putting up a, a vertical one time as a novice, mostly V4-6 vertical, trap vertical on the garage roof. I was up on the garage roof, just laying the radials there. I hear my mom calling me. Mrs. So-and-so says, get off the air. <laughs> You're wrecking her TV. But mom, I'm, on the, I'm not transmitting. But she says, get off the air. That's what we had to put up with in those yeah. days, okay? Uh -huh. So it was that. It was like that. It was challenging. What's so those of us who... YCB? Even What's that? What's that? What's the yeah. to YCB on six meters? Well, he was, yeah, he was on six meters. I know. I got his calls all the time. Um, a block away from me. People would call me. I can't watch Channel 2. There was somebody that used to interfere with my TV set, too. Says the rig sounds great. It sure does. <laughs> He's saying that AT1 brings back memories for him when he was a kid. He built his own transmitter with a 6AG7. And an 807, it's a little, little bit more power than this than this rig runs. But I think we're gonna take five minutes break. Very good. Back. We made Georgia anyway. Well done, Frank. Well done. Great. 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 I think I'm right on the bridge station. I don't want to do that. What if I hear you? Seven oh three six. 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 Somebody on the frequency, I don't want to stay there. Back up to 7038. I want to get out of a crystal. It's a very narrow band. Thank you. 
Nobody calling, I just can't hear him. He says, Many are calling, I can't hear him on this receiver. We get back from Edison probably one o'clock, so I brought my grandson up to our medicine and come here. Probably be here before the clock. And Jim's got Tell me you're working, we've got a VPN now, so we've got to fix it that way. Well, I don't know, I'm looking at the spot. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, maybe I didn't look at the frequencies, I just looked at all the 50 megahertz and saw this spotting. 
I just signed off for the night. That was great. That was great. This well done, Fred. Well done.